Bird and welcome to another episode of Full Bar. In today's video I'm going to talk about how to deploy automatically your serverless code. If you're interested in watching more content like this, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday. So let's get started! <laughs> video I talk about the importance of having a continuous integration and deployment pipeline and some of you ask me how you can do it with serverless, can you make some video about it? So today is the day. I'm going to use CodeBuild, that is a tool from AWS, a service from AWS, to uh, deploy code to Lambda and we will be using serverless framework and CodeBuild. At work I use Jenkins, so you can also do this with Jenkins, but for that you will need to have some sort of Jenkins instance or some, some Jenkins as a service that you can use. You can also use Oracle CI or other tools, but I like to use AWS products because you already have the account and CodeBuild has some uh, free tier options, so you can go and check it out. And also you pay as much as you use, so you don't need to have any instance running, so it's quite a nice service. Another advantage of code build is that you don't need to configure your AWS account to deploy it using it because it's already in your AWS account, so one less step to do. And the amount of uh, overhead you need to put to your project is very small to get this build, so it's also an advantage. So what is code build? AWS code build is not very old and it's a fully built managed service, meaning that you don't need to configure anything, you just start using Well, you need to configure the project you want to build, but you should start using it. You can compile a source code, you can run tests, and it produces packages that are ready to shop. So this also works for non-serverless projects, but for us we will uh, be using it to deploy to our AWS account. So we'll be using a mixture of code build to build and to run serverless framework, and serverless framework will be deploying to the AWS account. So yeah. As I said, with CodeBuild you don't need to manage, deploy, maintain anything of build servers. It's all in your AWS account ready for you to use. Uh, you can use, um, for CodeBuild, you will be uh, asked to select a Docker image. You can use your own or you can select one of the, the ones that come out from the package. And we'll be using one that comes from there because I don't need anything fancy. But if you need something fancy for your build machine, it would be a good idea to get your own image. You get 100 minutes of build time per month for free in your free tier of AWS. So all this you can do for free. So, so let's go to the code. In this code I will show you first, uh, we will be creating a very basic serverless framework project. We will be pushing it to some repository. It needs to be Git or Bitbucket. I will be using Bitbucket, but it works exactly the same way with Git. Then we are going to uh, configure some roles and we will then be um, configuring code build and adding some things to our project in order for it to build, running the build and you will see that in less than 10 minutes you will have this running and it will be super easy. To run test you will also need to add it to a script, we are not going to do it here but it's not that hard. So as I said, the first thing we are going to do is to create a serverless framework project, which is an empty template. As always, we use the serverless create to create the project, and then we initialize the, the, uh, the node project. I have done this too many times in the video, so I sure you know what I'm doing. If you not, go to the first episodes in this series and I will explain you everything. Also, after we created the serverless project, the first thing we always want to do is to change the name of the service, so it's something different because when this deploy, it will deploy with that name. And then we just don't change anything else in the serverless YAML because we don't need anything special in this project, it's just a test project. I'm just going to change the message so they can see that this is an automatically deployed code and that's that. Next thing I'm going to do is going to IAM, that is the access management uh, service from AWS, and I'll create a new role. I will create a new role from this Lambda 
as uh, we will be using code build, we need to have the role in place in order to deploy the, the code. So I'm just creating an empty Lambda role. If we have things like Dynamo or we are using S3 or something like that, we'll need to attach policies to this role. But for now, we just use that role and we can grab that ARN and put it in our serverless YAML. After that, we just initialize Git to the project. We commit whatever we have done. And then we can go to a Bitbucket, create a new repository. I just copy paste and I realized it was the role, but I just want that. And then I will just create the repository. Bitbucket is like GitHub, so it works the same way. And you just connect that uh, remote GitHub project with this uh, local GitHub re uh, repository and you push your code to the remote and then you refresh and you have your project on GitHub. Good. Now we go back to the AM and we will go to create a new role and this time we are going to create a code build role. This one is to uh, allow us to run the code build. And for that we need to attach some policies. First one is we are going to give S3 permission. If we write in S3, we'll, we, we won't be writing anything in S3, but if we want to write some artifacts or some results from this uh, code build execution, you will need the permission. Then we are going to give Lambda access so we can deploy this. And then we are going to give CloudFormation access so we can run CloudFormation scripts from the cloud build and API gateway so we can create API gateways and we just put a name I'm not very the most smart people when putting names so I just copy paste the same name but you can use this role for any code build because it's quite generic so there was a space and now with that role they are we go to code build and in code build we when you start there you just get started and it will pop up to configure your first project so you will need to select a name for it and we will pick the same name then you need to pick a source for the code we will be picking bitbucket if it's the first time using bitbucket and aws it will prompt you for permissions i already have done this so then I can use a repository in my account or you can use a public repository just putting the URL but now I will be using a repository of my account and I can choose a repository from the drop down I will just select the one I just created then we can uh, in the environment on building we will be using a docker image that is uh, managed by AWS because we don't need anything special so this docker image will uh, launch and it will execute whatever is in our build script and then it will die so we will pick Ubuntu that is the only option and we will be running Node.js code and I will pick Node 7 because my code is 6 point something and well if it's 7 it will just work and then we want to uh, use the build spec YAML in the source code root so that means that we need to go to our project and create that file and that build spec it will define what we want the code to do so let's do it now let's create a new file in the project in the root and that file will contain something very simple that first we are going to install serverless in the docker machine and then we are running serverless deploy in the region we want and that's that you can run basically anything you want here. Just remember to install the dependencies. Sometimes you need to install the project or things like that, but this is one way for this particular project. And now we have the build spec. 
Now I will choose that I don't want artifacts, meaning that things are come out from this build. Sometimes you need to have a package or something built and then you will deploy that package. But as we are just deploying directly from the Docker image, we don't want that. So I will choose no artifacts. And then I will choose the role that I just created. And let's leave that thing tick. I just untick it without wanting, but just tick it. Don't forget to tick it. Uh, we can uh, then commit that build spec before continuing into our remote repository. So when we build, it takes the latest code. And now we move forward and don't forget to tick that box. Then in the next option, it lets you select some environmental variables and some variables, but we don't care. We just continue and then it will start building. This is the, the shop and it has some ex, uh, build information there. And then you can see the face details. First is submitted, is provisioning, downloading the source from, from Bitbucket. And then there is some installation and that's like the build spec uh, steps. So you can see the logs soon, they will appear post build and there you can see the logs that is packaging and installing server uh, deploying serverless first it install it and now it's is deploying so when this step is finished the whole thing will be completed and um, finalizing and cleaning the docker container and removing everything and copying the artifacts is needed but we don't have any and then if we go to our lambda we can see that the the function is there and the code has been, if we test it, we can do an automatically deployed code. So we can see the message there. You can also put a API gateway there and run it from the, from the REST client as we have been doing it. But this is just an example of code build. So I don't want to make a very complex project for this. So This was the video for today. I hope you like it. I would love to know your opinions about code build if you're using it in production. I'm not using it in production, I'm just using Jenkins. So I would like to know what you think about code build if you have tried it and why you will use it in production or why you want not. So please let it in the comment below what is your opinion about it. I like to learn and I think we can all learn from your amazing comments. If you want anything else from me in the future videos, I always open to get these uh, great ideas of yours into videos as I'm doing with this one. So please let me know in the comment box below. And around here, you can always find more videos from my channel. So go ahead and click them and continue watching. If you like this video, share with your friends and I see you in the next episode of Fubar. Ciao!